I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's have a little talk about E3, shall we? Hello, Parker. Let's talk about E3 with Parker, then. Um, I'm not going to talk about absolutely everything, because there was a lot, but just what stands out. Let's start with Bethesda's conference. Um, yes. Um, it was pretty good. <coughs> I'm a little worried about Doom 4 now. Less worried than before, but... Le more worried than I should be. Um, so it looks better than Doom 3. I'll go ahead and say that. But uh, the trailer they <laughs> put together does not inspire very much confidence because there's all these forced animations, like all this slowly picking up guns, climbing ladders, and brutal melee finishers, and none of that shit. Doom does not need animations beyond your gun firing, frankly. Um, they talked about fast movement speed. The trailer did not show fast movement speed. The multiplayer trailer showed what I would consider appropriate Doom movement speed. And the trailer was obviously fake as all hell, so I'm going to hope that the multiplayer segments were actual gameplay and the main trailer they showed was just scripted hell, and that's why it looked like crap. Um, the chainsaw is the only thing where I was okay with the forced canned animations. Um, like, because honestly, in Doom, when you chainsaw someone, you latch onto them anyway. Like, the way chainsaws work in Doom is weird. You can sort of get stuck onto them, and with almost any enemy that isn't a boss, they get stuck in a hit stun loop. So they can't really respond anyway, so it's really not that different from a canned animation instantly killing them. So I don't mind that too much. Uh, uh, the melee crap, not a fan of. Um, and then there was the part where they were in hell and everything is brown. Aren't we done with that? Isn't... Like, somebody on my Twitter had this edited image that um, it made it look like a lot like, you know, stuff from Inferno in, you know, normal, in Doom 1. And the caco demons were red, and they had blue inside of their mouths, and uh, the sky was red, earth was... or the ground and stuff was gray. It looked great! The, compared to the original image where everything's just brown, the caco demons are brown, the ground is brown, the sky is brown. It's just looks exactly like a parody of last-gen first-person shooter games. And even Fallout! Uh, even Fallout finally got colors, so, I mean, honestly, colors are one of the most exciting things about the new Fallout reveal. Um, uh, before I stop talking about Doom, the, the map editor does look great, um, so I'm, I'm interested in hearing more about Doom, but I'm a little worried. I'm, I'm just not sure who they thought that trailer was for, because they made all this fuss about going back to the roots. Then they give us this trailer that just looks like standard dude bro shooter stuff. It looked more Doom than most first person shooter games. But it just doesn't look like a trailer they put together for Doom fans. It looked like a trailer they put together for standard shooter fans and that's pretty disappointing. Especially after, you know, Wolfenstein. That, that game was supposed to suck and it didn't. And that's honestly the best thing I can say about it. Um, but on to Fallout. Um, I think I was less excited for most of the Fallout announcements than most people. I really don't care about the dog. I really hope I can play without the dog. They said the dog is immortal and there's all these controls specifically for the dog. And I'm a little worried that you're going to be forced to take the dog along with you. But it's a Fallout game, so I kind of doubt they're going to force that. But I would like confirmation on that because I play Stealth and the partner's... I don't care how good you make the partner. It's going to be a pain in my ass when I'm trying to play stealth. Um, so yeah. The building stuff, I'm kind of tired of crafting and bases and stuff. So I'm glad that's optional, frankly. The colors look great. The time slow VATS system looks really good. Um, I almost never used VATS in uh, New Vegas, honestly. I just played it more like a first person shooter in terms of combat I prefer the Morrowind type you know combat is combat and then dialogue is dialogue I don't really need the VATS stuff um why are you 
you so loud. Um, so yeah, Fallout doesn't look bad, but I don't know. I still have a Pipway edition pre-ordered, so I can't be too upset, but I'm not entirely sure I want to keep the pre-order. Um, I don't know. it's not like I'm ever going to actually use the Pip-Boy. Um, props to them for actually including, like, the Pip-Boy has, you know, like, if you didn't know, you could fit your phone into it, and it apparently has different sized foam inserts so you can fit different phones into it. I gotta give them props for that, because most things, they would just make it fit only the latest iPhone, and if you have an older iPhone, or if you have any Android phone, or Windows phone, nah, you can't use it. Only for the latest iPhone model. That's stupid. Um, what else did Bethesda even have? Oh yeah, Dishonored 2. Very excited that Dishonored 2 is happening. Feel and protagonist is cool. Um, beyond that, like it was a CGI trailer, and it's hard to get too excited about that. But Dishonored 2 is happening. Dishonored 2, Dishonored 1 was one of my favorite stealth games in years, so uh, that's pretty exciting. Even if we don't know too much beyond that who the protagonist is I won't mention it it's, I'm sure everybody knows but if you haven't played it the new protagonist is kind of a spoiler uh, do definitely play Dishonored 1 if you've ever been interested in stealth it's really good um, so yeah I think that's all the interesting stuff at Bethesda um, they had a pretty decent conference um, not super great Microsoft had a better one um, that's not too surprising since, you know, they're much bigger, but, uh, <clears throat> so Rare Replay was a big highlight, you know, it's like 30 Rare games for 30 bucks, um, so that seems really cool. It's missing GoldenEye, which is a fairly big disappointment, but, uh, other than that, it seems really good. <clears throat> Less excited about Rare's new game, some online survival pirate thing. I really don't need any online survival games in my life. And if I did, there were like, there's like 18 billion of them on Steam Early Access anyway. So, not too excited about that. The Elite controller looks good, but I would need to know how that D-pad feels. Because they can, really can't make a good D-pad for the life of them. Um, other than that, it looks pretty cool, but I'm not really sure I would want to spend 150 bucks on it. Especially since I don't currently have an Xbox One. Um, what else did they have? They had Dark Souls 3. I'm honestly not a Dark Souls fan. Well, I love the art and the world of the stuff, but I just have never played one for more than an hour because I really don't like... Like, a combination of long and difficult is, like, does not really fit well into my schedule if it's not a series that I already love, so I just never really did too much with the series. <laughs> um... What else do they have? Um, the backwards compatibility thing was pretty big, but it sounds like it's like a repackaged executable, and it's like a game per game basis. What I have an Xbox 360 for is I have a Japanese Xbox 360 for my collection of Cave sh and other shoot 'em up games from Japan, and a bunch of them are region locked. And none of them are popular, so... And it seems like the po the compatibility list is a popularity contest. And we don't know about region information. Like, is stuff still going to be region locked? So, uh... I'm not sure I'm going to actually get any benefit out of that at all. So, it's really cool in theory. But it's not straight hardware backwards compatibility. Um... <coughs> So I'm not sure it's actually going to be any benefit to me personally. But it's still cool that it's happening. <coughs> Barker. Um, so... Honestly, not too excited about too much other stuff at Microsoft's conference. Um, was never a huge Tomb Raider fan. Uh, not a big Gears of War fan. And they showed the new one. I mean, it's Gears of War, I guess. Um... Halo didn't look too bad, didn't look super exciting. The new mode does sound cool, though. The Warzone thing is like a big, um, I think, I want to say 24 versus 24 or something. Like, it seemed more structured than Deathmatch, so it sounded pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's Microsoft. So, 
Sony was pretty much the main event. I guess EA came first. The one good thing about EA, well, three good things. They had Battlefront, they had Mass Effect. Those are pretty much what you would expect. And then they had Yarny, which is this really cool looking, experimental looking game about this little cute yarn monster thing. And if you haven't seen that segment, you really should. The guy, the guy they had presenting for Yarny, the creator, he just was so genuine. I could not believe I was watching an EA conference. The rest of their conference, aside from Mass Effect and Battlefront, was terrible. Um, just, it was almost all sports games, and they had Pele out there, like, talking, and you could barely understand him. He was there for, like, five full minutes, and I don't know what they were doing. Like, that must have been really expensive, and I don't know why it would excite anyone to play FIFA. Um, I don't know why they bother talking so much about sports games at the conferences. I mean, I know it makes them butt-tons of money, but I don't think any of the journalists are really that ex interested in that, and I don't... I mean, the one cool thing they did show out of all the sports stuff they had, um, the animations in the new NBA game do look really nice. Um, so they picked something good to show off there, but for the most part, I mean... Do even sports games fans get that interested about, you know, this whole big dramatic puff up about, you know, slightly improved sports game? I mean, I don't, like, I'm not saying don't buy sports games. I just don't see why you'd be need to see, like, them at a conference like that. Like, the new Battlefront info and stuff was much more interesting. Well, the new trailer, anyway. But yeah, that's EA. Ubisoft possibly the worst um, I missed like half of it honestly but they had this meme guy on and I don't know <laughs> they just had lots of shoot gun games they had just dance and um, it, it was a Ubisoft conference that's all, really all I can say about that um, it was awkward it had lots of shooting games and you cringed a lot and that's just the way Ubisoft is every single year Sony's conference was the main event. Um, they opened with The Last Guardian. That was, like, for so many reasons, that was absolutely perfect. Because, I mean, even ignoring the fact that that was great, uh, everyone will be wondering, where's The Last Guardian? Oh. So they just open with it, which is perfect. And it looks great. I know a lot, of, a lot of people say that it doesn't look improved, but if you look at screens of the PS3 version... Um, it was really blurry and gross, and the image quality was just going to be terrible. And so now, I don't really mind that they didn't improve the basic graphics too much, because it looks like we're going to get a really clear, sharp image, and I would really rather get, you know, clear, sharp, good stuff. And the bird does look, the bird cat thing looks better. Like, it's all fluffy now. But yeah, I'm really excited to play that. <clears throat> and so, after that... They had the Final Fantasy VII Remake, finally. Which... <coughs> There's not too much to say about that other than that it's awesome. And then they had the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter. There's been some controversy over that, but I'm really glad it's happening, and it seems like Sony might not be significantly funding it. <coughs> like... <coughs> um, like, they just came out and said... Um, that the Kickstarter will be the majority of the funding for the project, probably. So it sounds like it isn't, like, Kickstarter, so the publisher will fund you. Um, I'm a little confused on how that's all going to work out, but Chenmui 3 is happening. That's the important thing. Um, it's already at, like, $3 million on Kickstarter. Um, I have not played the original two games, and that's going to be... I'm in the U.S., so it's going to be a real pain to actually track down copies of that because I would need to buy a Dreamcast copy for Shenmue 1 and an Xbox copy for Shenmue 2, and I would also need to buy an actual Xbox. Now, I'm not even sure I still have my Dreamcast. I was stupid and gave away a bunch of my retro consoles in college. Don't do that. Don't give away your... Don't, you know, get rid of your old consoles. You'll regret it. Um, anyway. <clears throat> um... The biggest, the coolest thing at Sony's show for me was probably um, Horizon, that dinosaur, robot dinosaur game from Guerrilla Games. That looks so good. Uh, we only got the one trailer, but everything looks just fantastic. It's like, 
it's RPG, third-person shooter. It's got open world. It's got freaking robot dinosaurs. I'm a little tired of open world, quite honestly. But if there's one thing that will get me to go to an open world, it is hunting robot dinosaurs. So they pretty much knocked it out of the park there. <clears throat> Guerrilla Games is also... Or no, it's Guerrilla Cambridge. is making Rigs, which is this uh, competitive FPS thing for Morpheus. And Morpheus has a lot of cool stuff. Um, that they had on the show floor, but I couldn't, you know, I wasn't there. And they only show the sizzle reel at E3, which honestly was kind of a good decision. Lots of people are whining about, oh no, they'll show too much VR stuff. I don't want to be in virtual reality, Meryl. But, uh, so, <clears throat> it was probably best they didn't take too much time on it, but I personally am very, very excited for Morpheus and PC VR, though I'm not sure which, I'm not sure what headset I want for PC. I kind of really don't want to give Oculus slash Facebook my money, and I'm really liking the sound of Vive, so hopefully I'll be ending up with that, but there's all this talk of exclusivity and crap, and compatibility, and control methods, I don't know, it's currently very complicated, and it's all in theory instead of in practice, so I might just have to wait on PC VR to see how that shakes out, but Morpheus I'm probably getting day one. Though I have no idea how or if I'm going to be able to like record that for YouTube, so that's kind of a concern personally, but uh, I'll deal with that later. <laughs> um, back to the Sony conference, so <clears throat> Horizon looks great. World of Final Fantasy looks really awesome. I always really loved the cutesy spin-offs in Final Fantasy, personally, like the, the Chocobo series. Chocobo's dungeon's great. Honestly, I like Chocobo's racing more than I liked uh, Mario Kart 64. And um, it seems like they're finally going to make a real full-on RPG with a really cute aesthetic and sort of try to bring old fans and new fans into it. And that I just really like the art style on that. And so that's for PS4 and Vita. And uh, really interested in that one. Um, what else did Sony have? They had a lot, but it's just hard to remember over... <coughs> Horizon, you know, the holy trinity of lost games that they finally revived. Um, they got Call of Duty, which business-wise, that's a big acquisition. Personally, I really don't care, and I wish, like, they could give that to Microsoft so I had more, you know, conference time for other games. But, uh, I, that's, that's big for them. I can't complain too much. The one good thing I can say about Call of Duty is that They've finally lost the modern war aesthetic, and they seem to have actually gotten some interesting gameplay change-ups and settings and stuff, so I guess that's interesting. It looks better than Call of Duty Ghosts, at least. Um, <coughs> so yeah, Sony definitely had the best conference here, and I'm really excited for the VR stuff, and there's so much good stuff coming, like um, Rhyme. I'm kind of surprised they didn't show rhyme and abzu i think bolt well i'm not sure about when rhyme is coming abzu is coming early next year like next year if everything releases on time it's gonna be pretty crazy but rhyme <clears throat> rhyme and tomorrow children if they actually do launch 2015 are some of my most exciting like most anticipated titles for ps4 um yeah, so much good stuff like the one the I really like how Sony funds some of the uh, higher budget indie stuff that I don't really think would be able to get like funding on its own. Like the that game company games like Flow, Flower, Journey. Um, a lot of people prefer full indie and like complain that oh Sony you know makes these games exclusive, but these I don't think these games would really happen if they were completely self funded. Because I mean, the original if you look at the original version of Flow, it's really cool, but you know, with funding, they made something a lot better, um, though rather different, with Flow for PS3. And then Flower and Journey are just way, way beyond that. Uh, but I'm kind of rambling here. So, really excited for PS Indies, Morpheus, of course, the Holy Trinity, and that um, World of Final Fantasy. Honestly, I'm looking forward to World of Final Fantasy more than Final Fantasy 15 because I am pretty sure World of Final, or World of Final Fantasy is going to be good. Final Fantasy 15, uh, I don't know, man. Um, I, I, I need to play that demo, the updated version of the demo, but I just wasn't super excited after playing the original one. 
Uh, on to Nintendo. Oh boy. So they started off strong with Star Fox. Um, it looks good. I'm not a big fan of the Chicken Walker. The moment they showed that, I was like, no, no more on foot. And then they had the Landmaster, and that brought me back a bit. And apparently the R-Wing can transform now. But why does it transform into a weird walking chicken robot instead of just transforming into the Landmaster? Like, if you just went from, like, I really don't get why you just don't go straight to the Landmaster. Because the Landmaster was fine. Um, apparently Platinum Games is doing support for the single-player campaign. There's no online multiplayer. Like, a lot of some, the details we got after the conference aren't so great. Like, I heard that, like, apparently they're not going to do branching paths, so it's not Star Fox 64. Uh, you can replay, like, different missions on the di on the same level, apparently. Uh, so that might be all right. But it sounds like the game's going to be fairly short. Like, they are talking about, like, movie length, and that's, like, not good length for a non-branching game. Like, Star Fox 64 will, like, you can beat that in, like, an hour. But it's great because there's, like, um, I'm not even sure how many paths. There's, like, three major paths, and there's so many different branching, like, three or four major paths, at least. And there's so many branching different ways to play, and it's really cool. Um, I was really hoping for that because everything looked like Star Fox 64, and I, that really got me hyped. And they brought back, um, they brought back Peppy. Like, I know they wanted to shove Crystal into Star Fox Assault, but why do they have to get rid of Slippy? Or, why do they have to get rid of Peppy when everybody doesn't like Slippy? Um, yeah, it's cool that they've gone sort of, like, back to the Star Fox 64 crew, but my expectations are a little tempered after hearing about the no-branching paths and fairly short game. So I, I might have to wait for reviews on that one. And that's kind of unfortunate because other than Yoshi's Woolly World, that was probably my favorite thing they showed. So Yoshi's Woolly World does look really cool, and it sounds like it has the perfect difficulty for a Yoshi game. It sounds like it's pretty hard to get all of the stuff, all the collectibles, but you know, if you just want to run through, which is not the appropriate way to play a Yoshi game, by the way, you can do that. So it sounds like we might finally have the first game that really lives up to the Yoshi name since Yoshi's the Island. I like Yoshi's story, but it wasn't quite the same. And then Yoshi's Island DS was okay. New Island, pretty bad. Especially that music. God damn it. Anyway, um, so after that, well, the two really bad things they showed was that they showed this crappy fake Metroid game, Metroid Federation Force, and... It looks like some sort of like co-op mini game mission collection thingy, and it's just it's straight up not a Metroid game. Um, I don't really know what they're thinking. Um, a lot of people say, "Oh, it's okay that it's a Metroid game. They just you know it wouldn't sell as much if they didn't put the IP on there." Um, but the, Metroid isn't the first name I would put on something that I wanted to have like casual appeal or anything, like. Metroid fans want Metroid games. If you put Mario on there, you know, Mario people will buy anything. Like, it's, you know, a pretty general brand. Metroid is not. Metroid is Samus on a weird planet with a bunch of aliens, and you explore and stuff. It's not a bunch of dude bro space marines running around and broing all over the place, which is what this game apparently is. It also looks really, really ugly. Uh, so I'm pretty annoyed at Nintendo over that whole deal. Um, there's really no reason to brand that Metroid. It's just kind of a slap in the face. So, I don't know. I don't really mind the game existing, but it really should not bear the Metroid name. Um, there's been a whole discussion over this, so I won't spend too much time on it, but uh, extremely not happy about that. Um, meanwhile, in Disappointments, they had an Animal Crossing game for Wii U, but... It's a board game for Amiibos, and it might be a free download, and it's sold like as a package with some Amiibo, and it looks like it's even less interactive than Mario Party. Like, it looks like a straight-up plain old board game, like Monopoly or something, where there's like random events that give you or take away money from you, but no minigames, at least from what they showed. Um, I was like, that's not very excited to me. I don't have any Amiibos, so uh, 
I don't know. The only reason I would have to purchase anything related to that is the Isabel amiibo, but I already have an Isabel Nendoroid, it, which is going to be like 18,000 times higher quality. But uh, if the Isabel, like, it's if it's physically possible for an ordinary human being to order an Isabel amiibo, uh, which is very doubtful, and the non-prototype amiibo doesn't look like a complete garbage, which is also unlikely. I might purchase that. Um, on to less disappointing Animal Crossing news. Happy Home Designer looks really good. Um, like, home designing stuff is, like, my favorite part of Animal Crossing. By the way, Animal Crossing and Metroid are, like, two of my favorite Nintendo franchises. So this was a particularly crappy E3 for me. At least from the Nintendo standpoint. All, all in all, I gotta say, this was one of the best E3s ever. P probably the best ever. Um, not really on the Nintendo side, but everyone else had at least one or two things that would look really good. Sony just had freaking everything. Microsoft, pretty damn good too. Um, but not Nintendo. Uh, I'm the one thing about um, Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer I'm not super excited about is that. For some really unknown reason, um, they have these weird amiibo cards, and they have not explained much at all about the amiibo cards. Like, when they show the cards, it shows the back of the card, and it doesn't tell you about what the card... Like, it comes with a card, but it shows you the back of the card. Um, like, I mean, the game ships with a card, and that's like, oh, hey, it comes with an amiibo card, but it doesn't say what it does. So I'm pretty sure that the cards are random at this point, and you're gonna have to like buy packs, and that worries me because I I I like owning all of the content in a game, and that's what I really don't like the cosmetic DLC model, even because there's like a billion dollars worth of cosmetic crap, and even though I don't need all of that cosmetic crap, it just bothers me that I don't have all the content in the game. And then when it's actual gameplay content, that's even worse. And then tying actual gameplay content to random real money crap with cards. Ugh. So, I don't know. That seems like it could potentially be really annoying. But I still think I'll really like uh, Happy Home Designer in general. <laughs> uh, what else does Nintendo even have? Um... Oh yeah, there was that. They have a Four Swords sequel that only has three people. Um, I wasn't super excited about that one. It, it seems to have online play, so I might actually be able to play it for the first time ever in Four Swords history. But I just... Multiplayer co-op is not really what I want out of my Zelda game, so I w just wasn't very excited for that one. It does sound like it's less competitive, so <laughs> I guess that's good. And they also had Paper Mario and Luigi. Uh, not the Paper Mario game I wanted. Big surprise. Yes, hello, Parker. Yes. 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 Um, it looks very minigame-centric, and it just kind of looks like a... Yes. Hush. It just kind of looks like a Mario and Luigi game with Paper Mario just sort of painted on there. So, uh... That probably means it's better than Sticker Star, but still kind of disappointing. Like, in all honesty, Paper Mario has the most potential out of the out of the two, but Mario and Luigi has more consistently high quality. Like, Mario and Luigi games are all at a bare minimum okay or pretty good. Um, Paper Mario, the first two games are fantastic, and then Sticker Star. It's just absolutely terrible. Like, Sticker Star? Uh, yes, Parker. Um, the only way I can imagine that Sticker Star got created was that Miyamoto was like, Hey, you know people that don't like to use elixirs? What if we made this game that is just entirely designed around pissing those people off? Because every item is consumable, and there are no ways to attack without consuming an item. And I hate consumable items. So the game is just basically hell and uh, then there's Super Paper Mario which honestly I've never tried and 
I guess it might be okay, but I don't really appreciate it being a Paper Mario game. Um, Cause Thousand of Year Door was so great, and uh, they could really do with another proper RPG, Paper Mario, but uh, I don't know. This might be all right. I'm just concerned with... It seems like they were showing a lot of mini-games, and it seemed... Uh, yes. Because mini-games are pretty much always the worst part of any RPG. That's the one, th the one thing I really hope they change in the FF7 remake is they need to make the mini games either not suck or just remove them. I'm fine with just removing them, honestly. I mean, the Golden Saucer needs to still be there, but a lot of the mini games could do with some major de-sucking. Um, who else? Oh yeah, there was the PC conference. Um, that was like two and a half hours long, not with any very major announcements. Um, it wasn't terrible minute to minute it was just way too long and they could have done with crunching it down to like an hour and like you know rapid fire announcements and like one minute per idea or whatever that would have been much improved um there are the new amd cards i'm interested about new cards i still have a rate on 6950 and i really need to upgrade and i'm not sure to what or even to what brand honestly but uh I'm still going to wait and see some real-world benchmarks from the new AMD stuff. Because I would like something that can run VR, but uh, and ideally maybe uh, 720p ultra-wide and 60 frames per second. Um, but yeah, not really sure what graphics card I want. But overall, very good E3. Just um, only Nintendo kind of screwed up. EA and Ubisoft were standard, but... Microsoft and Sony and Bethesda, very good shows. You can hear Parker smelling the microphone. Um, so yeah, good E3. Um, I had a lot of fun commentating E3 on. I run um, on Twitter. I'm at the X Bone. It's like a parody account of like AAA gaming slash Microsoft in general. And uh, it was a lot of fun to make fun of the announcements, even though it was still a very good E3. I think the PC conference is a good idea, but they just need to really focus it up. It could have been... I mean, they didn't really have any Megatons, which is not surprising. Oh, right, No Man's Sky. That looks really good. I, I'm not mentioning stuff that was already shown before. Like, that, that's the amazing thing. The The crazy thing about Sony's conference is that they, they had so much new stuff, they barely had time to show any of the old stuff. And there's some stuff that they didn't even show that looks really cool that's still coming up, like... They almost needed two conferences. In fact, I did mention on Twitter, they kind of need, like, an indie conference where, like, every indie game on the show on the show floor gets, like, one minute to show their crap or something, or two minutes or whatever. Because at least Sony, especially their VR stuff, they had so many cool things. Like, in their, um, for Morpheus, they had this thing called Godling, where you have this little tiny god, and you're, like, looking, like... It's hard to, to explain, but it looks really cool. They had the they had a new Battle Zone game, like Battle Zone Two, on PC. That was that was awesome. I love that game. And so they're now it's like this tank combat game, and the new one has like this really cool, um, flat hex based graphics, and it looks really cool. I'm really excited for VR games that do not have a realistic aesthetic. Um, and then there's Futuridium VR, which is native 120 FPS on Morpheus, and that looks really cool. So I'm excited for a lot of that. Um, <laughs> 2016 should be a really crazy good year. Oh yeah, and Uncharted 4, of course. I shouldn't even need to say, but Uncharted 4 looks really awesome. Anyway, I should... Parker needs his tummy rubs. So I'll pretty much leave it off with that. Oh, one more thing. I'll... Um, well, two more things. First thing, YouTube is doing a gaming streaming service, and it seems like they're finally serious about gaming now. And it hasn't launched yet, but I'm very excited to try it out. I might even try out some streams this weekend, because, I mean, all of my fans are on YouTube, and I really don't like Twitch for assorted reasons. And this could be really good if they're serious about it and they don't go too crazy with censorship and all that crap. Like, um... <laughs> Twitch recently banned adults-only games, and that's not too big of a deal, but 
I was really annoyed. They briefly banned Estival ver- Senra and Kagura Estival Versus, which is not an adults-only game. Um, it's basically um, it's a Zero D game, and it's pretty much guaranteed to be an M-rated game in the U.S. And like at a bare minimum, anything M-rated or lower should be streamable, in my opinion. Um, so hope YouTube doesn't go too crazy and you know banning stuff like that. Um, <laughs> more generally. And since this is kind of a podcast sort of episode, I'll go ahead and mention what I've been playing playing recently. I imported um, Hyperdimension Neptunia Victory 2, and that is really fun. Um, they impor- they improved, like, everything, basically. Um, it has way higher level of polish than usual. Um, it just looks and plays really good. Uh, I've really been enjoying that, even though I can't understand pretty much any of the story and sort of bumble around with the menus and stuff. It's If you've played a Neptunia game before, it's fairly playable, like, because um, you don't really get lost. But uh, I would still recommend waiting for localization if you don't speak Japanese. But I've really had a blast with it. Um, I've also been playing um, Estival Versus, got a free update with new two new characters. And so I've been playing some more of that. I might actually stream that later. Um, that game's really fun, and that's coming to the U.S. this year. Xseed, let me say, um, Xseed Games is localizing, like, a ridiculous amount of games, and, like, tons of really niche ones, too. So, that's really cool. They're, they're just a really cool company, and I'm glad to see they seem to be really successful lately. Um, what else have I been playing? I've been trying to go through my backlog of, uh, PC indie stuff to check out, too, and so hopefully I'll have some more videos this weekend. Um, sort of got behind on some of that due to various reasons, but hopefully be catching back up on that now. Who's Q Parker's? Yes. Yes. All right, Parker needs some belly rubs, so let's wrap it up here. <laughs>